So in our production server, we only have two DLIs. And actually, we are running two instances of Elasticsearch on such server, because we have, we, we actually are running a staging server and production server in parallel in one day node, because like, we just want to <laughs> rent one machine to do two things. One of my C loads is uh, failing. It says there's a forbidden 12 index read only allow and delete API. Forbidding, sorry? It's uh, blocked by the forbidden, the error message is number 12, and it says there's the, in, the index is read only. Oh, the index is read only. Uh, oh, uh, maybe your, your disk is running low on storage, right? If you're, if you're, if you're, this on your computer is about like I think it's eighty percent or ninety percent full. Then the Elasticsearch search will automatically lock all the indexes, and it will become read only, and which is quite a nuisance. So, so yeah, maybe I'll just need to uh, mention that because it is a default value of Elasticsearch. search, and you will need to. I think you can just Google for the message, for, for this message and you'll find a command, a curl command that clears up all the flags. But you'll need to do the clearing after you free up some space in your laptop. Yeah, because that once you get USA start running, then you will just like lock up all the indexes again. Yeah, so it's it's crazy <laughs> for that search. So Yeah, so uh, back to our production production here. Um, in terms of memory control, we have a, we have actually have, we, we, we are actually setting this ES Java ops environment variable to, um, to, to set a hard limit on Elastic Search. And these, um, these, these variables are recommended by actually by Lexi search on his documentation of Docker installments, a uh, production Docker configurations. Yeah, so you'll, you'll need to like take a look at this. Maybe you'll need to take a look at this. So we, uh, as I have mentioned, we have we are running two instances of Elasticsearch search here. So so you can see like there's DB and there's DB staging. They are both running Elasticsearch search um, different ports. Oh, actually, they are on the same port. I forgot. Oh, there, there is no, 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 no such setting. So they are running on the same port, but I, we can always map the port to different different ports on our local host. So that's right. So if you are short on memory, you will need to like like uh, be, uh, like like playing with these properties, or maybe may, maybe have an extra property if you are really short on memory. Like, you, you can even fix it with only 500 megabytes of memory, and then you need another flag <laughs> to, 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 do, to do such a thing. I, I've tried some, it, it's a process of trying and error, because uh, actually I'm a front-end front engineer, so <laughs> it, it, it was a hard time for me to, to play around these Docker Compose. Configurations. Okay, so I think we have only 15 minutes left, so maybe I'll just go on with. I, I, I just have a overview, quick overview of this whole system. Yeah. So for the entire whole facts, actually we have several repositories that you can see at our. At our GitHub, there are several repositories, including uh, those are we, we haven't cloned, like uh, rumors API, rumors line bot, rumors site, and actually there is a rumors FB bot, but it's under it's not it, it, it is actually not still not running yet. Yeah, but we we do have some efforts. So what are the relationships between these repositories? So we have put up a simple, very simple diagram for, for this, like here. So
So um, Rover's DB is, as I mentioned before, is just a bunch of uh, database mappings and database migration scripts. But actually, we use this to 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 represent uh, this Elasticsearch database here in this diagram. <coughs> and the Rover's API, which is actually um, you have not cloned it, right? Because that because because we have um, we have already included it in our Docker Compose in, in the Docker Compose YML you are you are currently manipulating. Uh, we have already we have already prepared a Docker image for this, and for this um, it it will start an API server, and it is communicating with its client, which are uh, Rumors site. It is our editor site, and Rumors linebot, which is a linebot. So so actually, uh, the website and the the linebot, and potentially there will be more bot servers. They are actually clients to the Rumors API, and the Rumors API is the only way that they can, these clients can access Rumors DB. So, uh, so it's just a separation of concerns here. So Rumors side are now all clients, and this API is a gateway or just API for 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 these database, or for our Rumors database, and and as you know that. Uh, so, so these rumors DB they have a lot of fields in it. Like you will have an index to store the instant messages, which is articles. Art the, the, the index name is articles inside the rumors DB, and also the replies. We have these two big um, uh, two big indexes in, in rumors DB, and the rumors API here. It will if you successfully get the rumors API running, I think in in this step you should be having a this should run on localhost five thousand. Yeah. After this you should after this command you should be able to access to this API server here. And it's a GraphQL server, so it, it so comes with a handy GraphQL interface. You can just ask some of the queries here, like you can get article, uh, you can list articles to list all the current current available documents here, like you do, and and you can you can you can you can get article. With an ID, and you can like get some. You can you can get the text this article is about, which is huh, some weird text. <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually used in, in in our unit test, and we don't have I, I don't have time to like um, change the text. So it is a test. It it is one test. Uh, documents in our unit test to test the uh, uh, URL scrapping functionality. Yeah, so here is the API server. The API server has some um, interfaces for for the clients like chatbots and websites to get article, get user list, or articles of these users. Only five uh, query schema query here and. There are more here, like uh, mutations. So you have, you, you, this API allows you to create article to reply, create reply to create article reply, stuff like that. Article reply is um, actually re articles and replies have end-to-end uh, -end mapping. So have or has and belong to many mappings. So so this is this is how you can just like connect articles with replies via this API. So it has everything you need to build a website for editors and every interface you need to, to, to build uh, the, the, the chatbot. Yeah. And if you are not familiar with GraphQL, GraphQL is a way that clients and server can, it, it is a way to do uh, RPC. 
and it is developed by Facebook. So um, you can just learn more about GraphQL in GraphQL's um, training session. Yeah. So behind the hood, currently this, this GraphQL server runs on, runs on, 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 on HTTP, so you can still grab the request panel and see what's actually sending uh, between this playground and the server. And actually, in this in the in the client's code base, including the website and LiveBot, we, we we already have some utility functions to invoke. Uh, I mean, to 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 call the APIs of the GraphQL server. So so you don't need to you don't need to like um, worry about what what's client to be to be shown there. Right. So. And after this site, you should you should be able to to access localhost um, three thousand, and which is the website I have just shown you before. And if you like, click this red button here, then you can go into the articles list here, and you don't need to click this checkbox here to, to reveal uh, the other articles here, the other articles because that, and you need to uh, click this all here to show all the articles because um, there are some filters here. And if you have configured your database and the seed data uh, correctly, there should be some articles that can be read through the API from the database. And this article is just a, one of the articles that I have, I have just sent via our chatbot. Yeah. So here is another milestone here to 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 fire up, actually fire up the API server and the website. Yeah. So maybe I'll just pause here for a bit to. Get more questions here. Okay. Maybe I'll just like um, have a little bit introduction to this URL resolver here. This URL resolver is actually another GraphQL server running on localhost four thousand. And it is pretty interesting. So this is actually a standalone microservice. So if you don't, if you if you if you are not interested in Colfax, but uh, this might help you if you want to build a scrapper or something. Like um, it will have like it, it provides an API called uh, Resolve URLs. Yeah, so you can you can you can just like do, do stuff like this, and is it? Can you read this? Maybe maybe you will. Okay, here. So that um, this is a GraphQL server that allows you to put any URL that you want to scrap, then it will respond. But um, it will not only uh, it, actually it will it won't respond with uh, it will respond with HTML. It, it just it, it actually does grab the HTML, but it has it, it does something more. It does it uh, it does like JavaScript redirects. It, it, it understands that JavaScript. It understands all the redirect ma 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 metrics, and because it, after um, because after the hood, uh, under the hood, it is actually using Puppeteer, uh, which is a headless browser to resolve your URL. So it runs the JavaScript, it, and it uses uh, Mozilla's readability JS to extract the content to like this one. Readability JS is a JavaScript library 
developed by Mozilla to like extract content, uh, relevant content from a raw HTML piece. So we are using this uh, readability to 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 this. So so that you, you, even if this website actually is pretty complex, it has a lot of navigation, it has a lot of ads. But after this readability, you will extract some useful content for us to, to index in our database. So even if you are not interested in Colfax, Colfax maybe this microservice is helpful to you if you are trying to build a versatile um, crawler of web. Yeah. So I think we have a few minutes left. Yeah. And for the last minutes, I think we I will go through the last settings here. Uh, actually, to get this website running, you may need to update your ETC hosts. Uh, the reason is like here yeah, because. Um, In our Docker Compose here, we are the APIs. All the, all the configurations are here, and the APIs and the, the website is talking to each other via here via this public API URL. So, but actually, this site here is a isomorphic JavaScript uh, Node.js server that runs both. Um, server side and on your browser. So the settings here, HTTP uh, API 5000 is both shared for the server inside Docker and for the browsers. And that will be a problem because that inside Docker, it will, it will only recognize these host names set by Docker Compose. But outside of Docker, uh, the browser don't understand what this API means, this hosting means. So that's why we will need to, uh, in order to like get this localhost 3000 uh, article page running, you, you, in order to get this page running, uh, you may need to update your ETC host to teach your computer about API, this hosting. And for the last, I think we have a few minutes left. Then I'll get through the, I'll just like go through the hardest part, the last part here. The last part is to get the chatbot server running. Why is this a, the most difficult part? Because it doesn't involve a lot of tech. It involves a lot of clicking on the line documentation site. And I think that will be the most difficult part. <laughs> the site. You don't have control, you need to follow all the lines and um, tutorials. So here is a link to the guide that we will guide you through like uh, registering, register line, and register as a line developer, and create a channel, and go to the developer uh, council to get, to get these two line channel secrets. It will be in a text box and the line channel token, you will be in another text box. You will need to copy that over to your Docker Compose. Like it's at the bottom, the line box section, you have, section, you have line channel secret and line channel token. And this <coughs> is the two um, fields that we will, you will need to fill to, in order to get your line server running. And after you are run, the line server is running, you will need to, still you will need to provide a URL in the line developer console because the line server will need to know which URL they should send um, users messages to. So you will need another like reverse proxy like, um, like, line. Inside our rumors line box repository, there's a missing piece here. Like, um, you need to use 
something like NGROK, which is handy to 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 to, to proxy all the network requests to your laptop. Actually, you will build a reverse SSH tunnel between between NGROK and your laptop. And so you will need to like fire up this one and fill the URL to feed the URL to the line developer console, then get through the final step. So, so then you will get a chatbot that will send requests to your server on your laptop, and yeah, you can just like finish the whole bit up. Yeah. So I think I have run out of time here. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, you know talk already, and there are still. Actually, I have omitted a lot of things. Like, uh, in order to, in in our editor's website, we can allow users to like register with Facebook and register with Twitter. All these will need you. You will need to like create a Facebook app for Facebook logging and create a Twitter app for Twitter logging. All these are omitted in this because that, um, because for for the sake of liberty, but uh, just a quick note that you need to fill these in order to 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 be, be able to allow users to uh, register using Facebook, uh, Facebook app, IT, Facebook secrets, consumer secrets, stuff like that. Yeah, so I think this is the introduction of how to run Codex on your laptop, and hopefully like you, everyone can just um, change this uh, Docker Compose to your need so that you can run Codex anywhere um, to everywhere, anywhere you want. So thank you, and I'm happy to take questions after this session. Yeah, so thank you very much.